Hi everyone, it's Tarrant. And Stella from the Dice Tower. Thanks for joining us. Today we'll be teaching you how to play Encounters Shattered Wastes, a game designed by Ryan Farmer and published by Almanac Games. We are using a prototype copy here of the game, so the rules and components may not be final. Let's get to it. Encounters Shattered Wastes is a cooperative game for up to four players, in which the players will guide characters in one big boss fight against a single enemy. Players will use their ability and magic while tactically spreading across the battlefield and trying to damage the enemy. All the while, the enemy will be throwing its strength back at the players and dealing its own powerful attacks. If the players can completely defeat the enemy before they themselves are all removed from the board, then the players will win the game. To set up, the players will be creating characters that they'll be playing and choosing an enemy to face. You can do this in either order, that is, choosing a team of characters and tailoring them to the enemy you'll face, or building up some characters and finding out at random whom they'll encounter. To set up your characters, choose between one and four of those available with the game. Each player can play as one or more characters as long as you don't have more than four for the encounter. For each character, flip its card over to the heroic side and take a player track on its blue heroic side. Set your green hit points and your blue magic points equal to their starting values and your red threat at zero. Take a basic activation marker and place your standee on any one of the 10 blue spaces of the main board. You may never have more than one standee per space. Next, you'll be choosing your character's ability and item cards from these five shuffled decks. Although we're only in setup, this is one of the most important phases of the game because the cards and abilities that you get now will be with you throughout most of the encounter and you won't have many, if any, opportunities to change them out. First, each character draws the eight cards shown at the bottom of the character card. So here it's two martial, two support, two sorcery, and two items. Look through them and choose the three that you wish to keep, placing those in front of your character and then shuffling the rest back into their respective decks. You'll make these choices at the same time for all of your characters, and what you'll be trying to do is make a good set of abilities which combo with each other and with the innate abilities of the characters. Choose your enemy. Place its card on the uninjured purple side and place its standee in play. Find the five card rage decks which depict both sides of your enemy's card. The uninjured rage deck goes on the enemy's card and the injured one goes off to the side for later. Separate the strength cards into two decks, physical and magical, based on this large icon on the back. These cards will have differing numbers of threat icons showing on them and this is an indication of how dangerous that card might be. At the bottom of the enemy card, it shows a number of physical and magical icons, and you'll place that many cards per character into the stamina pile, then shuffle them all together. Also place one physical card into each of these five rows. These are the cards which are currently part of the combat. Set the strength decks aside for possible use later on. Shuffle the affliction deck ready for future use, and place the round marker on its blue guarded side onto the refresh space of the round tracker. You're now ready to play. In Encounters Shattered Wastes, your team is in one big boss battle with the enemy that you've selected. The game is played in rounds and you'll continue playing rounds in these three phases over and over until either you've defeated the enemy or all of the characters have been removed from the board. The three phases of each round are Refresh, Action and Defend. In the Refresh phase, new cards will be drawn from the Stamina deck and put into the enemy areas. In the Action phase, each character will take a turn to take two actions, which will largely involve moving, recovering and attacking, 
with successful attacks moving strength cards from the areas to fatigue. Finally comes the defend phase, where characters are attacked and suffer the effects on these strength cards, or in some cases on the enemy's rage cards. Cards resolved in this phase are moved from the areas to fatigue. At the end of the defend phase, if stamina is empty, then the enemy's fatigue deck will be shuffled back to form a new stamina deck before the new round begins. This cycle of strength cards from stamina to areas to fatigue to stamina is the main flow of strength cards through the game. However, to win the game, you need to get all of the enemy's strength cards into the wounds pile. There are two main ways to do this. In some cases, it'll be a specific ability or the luck of a critical hit, which will move a strength card to wounds instead of fatigue. However, the other way is all to do with timing. In a round where the enemy's stamina deck is empty, that enemy becomes staggered. And for the rest of this round only, any successful hits you land on the enemy go straight to the wounds pile instead of fatigue. As such, it's through these staggered rounds that you'll want to do as much damage as you possibly can. Once you reach the end of that round and shuffle fatigue back into stamina, the enemy becomes guarded once again. In a way, you can think of this as being a lot like a classic 16-bit video game boss battle, where the enemy will go through a routine where you can't harm it, and then when that small window of opportunity arises, you do as much damage as you can. Furthermore, and we'll see this as the video goes on, both the enemy and the characters may reach the point where they take on other and more powerful forms. But for now, let's take a look at the basic steps of each round in more detail. The first phase of each round is refresh. First, check the five areas, and any area containing no cards and at least one character gets one new card from the stamina deck. Secondly, for each character, roll a number of dice equal to the enemy's refresh value. This could be anywhere between one and three. For each die rolled, move one card from the stamina deck to the matching numbered area. There are five areas, and on a roll of six, you place nothing. There is no limit to the number of cards which may be in an area. If you draw the last card from the stamina deck, then flip the status token over to the staggered side. Continue rolling dice until you've rolled enough for each character, and any subsequent cards come out of fatigue instead of stamina. Once both of these decks are empty, you can skip any remaining rolls. Second is the action phase. In this phase, each character makes one activation, and you can always choose which order to activate the characters. You can use these markers to remind you who has and hasn't activated. On an activation, that character must take two actions. And there are five different actions available. These are move, attack, recover, use an active ability card, or shatter. You may choose the same action twice or do two different actions. There are also some free actions which do not use up your two action points. When you move, move your standee up to three spaces orthogonally around this grid. You may move through another character but may not finish on top of one. The map is divided into five areas, which are represented by these rows, and two lines, the front line and back line. Your choice of area determines which strength cards you can attack and which ones can harm you. While your choice of line might impact whether you get harmed by physical or magical damage, and combos with specific abilities on some cards. To do a basic attack, you'll be attacking the strength cards in your current area. Doesn't matter which line you're on, this is resolved the same way. Roll a number of dice based on your combat dice value here. 
if you roll more than one die, add the dice to determine your result. There are three possible outcomes. If you roll equal to or below your current threat, then your attack misses. Nothing else happens and your action is over. If you roll strictly above your current threat level, then you hit. You now deal a number of damage to the enemy equal to this value here, so in this case 2. Taking from top to bottom, move that many cards from your current area into the fatigue pile or the wounds pile if staggered. Then take note of the total number of threat icons on the cards that you moved and increase your threat value by that many steps. This makes it more difficult to hit the enemy on subsequent attacks. The third outcome is that you roll exactly equal to your critical hit value, which is this value here. Critical hits can occur whether the value is above or below your threat. You'll again deal an amount of damage based on this value. But those hits go straight into the wounds pile instead of the fatigue pile, and you do not increase your threat. Your third option is to use an active ability, and this is any one of the cards in your hand with the word active printed under its title. This costs a number of magic points based on the number in the top left corner of the card. And if you don't have enough magic, you can't use the ability. Each active ability may be used at most once per activation. Some of these are special attacks, and they'll include the word attack as well as the number of dice that you need to roll. Resolve this like the basic attack, but resolve any additional benefits printed on the card. If the ability is not an attack, then simply resolve the text. Some of these cards will end with you may cycle or you must cycle. To cycle, you return that card to the bottom of its deck and replace it with the next one from the same deck. This is one of the few ways to change your ability cards and generally means that the strongest abilities can only be used once. There are three types of card which don't use up one of your actions to resolve. A free ability can be resolved once during that character's activation by spending the amount of magic points. A reaction is resolved on any player's turn or in any phase, as long as the criteria above the lightning bolt have just been met. Then spend the magic points and resolve what's below the lightning bolt. Each may be used at most once per phase, and this also applies to the reaction traits on character cards. And for an item, you'll resolve it during that character's activation without spending magic points, but then, unless stated otherwise, must flip it face down. This is a once per game effect and is not replaced with another card. The fourth action is recover, and this is how you'll manage your character's statistics. First, roll one die. Based on this result, you have three options. These are, you can increase your magic points by that many steps, up to a maximum of your starting magic points. Or you can reduce your threat by that many steps. Or you can discard one affliction card. We haven't seen how you get these yet, but they're bad and worth getting rid of. Alternatively, if you exactly roll your critical hit value, then your options become to replenish your magic points all the way to max, or to reduce your threat all the way to zero, or to remove all of your affliction cards at once. Your final option is to voluntarily shatter your character, but we're going to talk about this later in the video when we talk about the shattered form. Once all players have activated, you'll move to the defend phase. From top to bottom, go through the five areas, and for each make two checks. First, add up the total number of threat on any strength cards in the area and compare it with the current enemy's threat limit. If this value is higher, then you'll flip the top strength card and resolve this negative effect for all characters in all areas. Then move the card face down into fatigue. Then check whether there are any characters in the area. If there are, flip the top remaining strength card and 
resolve that negative effect for only the character in that area, again before discarding it to fatigue. If there are two characters in the area, check whether it's a physical or magical strength card which is on top. Physical will attack the front line and magical would attack the back line. In this case, the monk would suffer this damage before it went to fatigue. If there's a character in an area with no strength cards, then you will instead draw the top rage card from the enemy's deck. Resolve that on the character in that area and then return it to the bottom of the rage deck. This is never shuffled, so eventually you'll be able to count which cards are coming up. There are four different effects which appear on the strength cards in various combinations. This is a hit, which causes the player to lose one health point. This is a threat, which causes the player to gain one threat. Hits are only found on physical strength cards and threat on magical. This is Affliction. The player must draw one Affliction card and then resolve its negative effect until the card is gone. And this is a Corruption. It's ignored for all heroic players, but results in plus one Corruption for a Shattered player. These two are present on both types of Strength card. The effects on Rage cards can be more varied. Once you've gone through all areas, check whether the enemy is staggered. If so, shuffle any cards in Fatigue back into the Stamina deck, and as long as there is still a Stamina deck, flip back to the guarded side. Then proceed to the next round. Through the game, your character may change from Heroic to Shattered form, and this can happen in two ways. Either immediately and automatically upon reaching 12 Threat, or voluntarily by taking the Shatter action. In either case, you'll flip over both your player board and your character card, and you'll discard the abilities you had since the start of the game. You'll now reset. You start with zero threat, zero corruption, this takes the place of magic points for a shattered character, and your new maximum number of hit points. This healing is usually the main reason you'll voluntarily shatter. Finally, draw a number of Shattered Abilities from the Shattered deck based on this number at the bottom of your card. Some of these are passive, they're simply always in effect and have no cost. For the others, if you are to resolve the ability, then you must gain Corruption equal to the number of Magic Points you would have had to have spent. Corruption is the main difference between a Heroic and Shattered character. Although you can gain it to resolve these abilities, it's also a penalty that you'll get off many attacks from the enemy. And reaching your maximum capacity for corruption is one of the ways for your character to be removed from the game. In some rare cases, it's also possible to reclaim a shattered character back to the heroic side. If you gain this effect, you'll flip both cards back to the heroic side, discard your shattered abilities, again reset to your starting Health, Magic and Threat, and gain three new abilities. This time you'll simply draw three cards from any deck, rather than drawing eight and having a choice. You can even take Shattered abilities when you reclaim in this way. Finally, swap your Activation Token for a reclaimed Activation Token. You can only reclaim once. To win the game, the players must defeat the enemy before all characters are removed from the board. This can happen if a character has no hit points at the end of its activation, and this counts for a heroic, reclaimed, or shattered character, immediately when it reaches 12 threat for a reclaimed, or shattered character, or at the end of the action, which causes the shattered character's corruption to reach or exceed its maximum value. To defeat the enemy, the players must move all of the enemy's strength cards into the wounds pile and survive till the end of the round in which that happens. Partway during the battle, the enemy will change form from healthy to injured, and this will occur the first time the players cause a wound while both the Stamina and Fatigue piles are empty. 
When this happens, remove the healthy rage cards. Flip the enemy card over. Place the injured rage deck and the injured standee. Move the entire wounds pile back down to stamina and flip the staggered token to the guarded side. Yes, that's right, all that progress lost. Then reset the stamina deck based on what's printed here, adding or removing cards. In this case, nothing would happen, but here, for example, you would add two new physical strength cards per player, and here you would add seven new magical cards per player, and remove six physical cards per player, if able. Now check the enemy's new stats and abilities and continue the fight. Once you've got all strength cards in the wounds pile, then you just have to survive the enemy's last gasp. In this special final defend phase, draw one rage card and apply its abilities to all characters. As long as at least one character remains on the board, then the players win. And that's how to play Encounters Shattered Wastes. Check out the project page of the game. We'll put the link in the description below so you can check it out. If you find this video useful, please help us by hitting that like button and subscribe to the Dice Tower. And if you have any questions, comments or feedback, please leave that in the comments section below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.